In this video, I'm going to show you an in-depth tutorial of the pricing strategy. So pay close attention. And once you've gone through this, you'll understand on how to price your items. Now this little Google sheet over here, I've created it for you guys. The link is in the description of this video. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on the link on the description of this video. You cannot add or edit this specific sheet over here because this is the template sheet that I'm using. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on file and then click on download and then click on as a Excel document over here. And then once it's downloaded, you want to go over to Google Sheets. Just type in Google Sheets and then go to Google Sheets and then click file, open file picker over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on upload and then you're going to put the sheet that you downloaded, you're going to put it, drag it into here, or you're just going to select it and then upload it. And then once you've done that, you'll have your own version of the sheet that you can edit yourself and then you can add or remove lines and details off there. So let's go back over here and let's have a look at this. What have I done here? So I'm going to explain each section to you so you fully understand. And this is going to be very helpful for you guys especially when you're keeping track of items that you've sourced. So number over here, this is just going to be number one, two, three, four, five, and so on. You're just going to keep going down that way. The eBay product is once, say for example, you've done your product research, you found a product. So I'm going to look at this, this example over here, the Street Fighter cap, because I've used it on a previous video. So we're just going to go ahead and use this as an example. So say for example, we've used Zik Analytics, we found this product, and then we're going to, we want to go ahead and list this item onto our store. So what we've done is we found the eBay seller that we're going to be sniping over here. So what we're going to do is you're going to click on the URL of the eBay item, the, the person that you're sniping. You're going to copy all of this by the press control C or right click and copy. And then you're going to paste it over here. The reason you're going to paste it over here is if you ever need to come back to this item and you ever need to come back and see the eBay sellers item, you can just go ahead and click on the link over here. Then the next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and copy the title, copy the title of the item over here and then paste it there. That way you'll be able to keep track of what the title was when you sniped it. And if the eBay seller ever does change the title, then you'll be able to find it because at least you've got the link to the product over there. Then over here, this is just for your information. So remember earlier on in the tutorials, I showed you look at items that were selling at least two times in the last 14 days and sold a minimum of 10 times. So this is just to keep track of that. Now over here, this specific product is only sold once in the last 14 days. And as a matter of fact, it sold a total of 28 days, 28 times, sorry. However, I'm just using this as an example over here. So that's why you just need to bear with me on this one. So number of sales is one and then the total number of sales is 28. Now the eBay price over here is the price that the, the seller is selling this item for. So in this instance, the eBay seller is selling this item for $10.25. So I've put $10.25 over here. Now here you want to put the go ahead and put the AliExpress product link. So I'm just going to delete whatever's in there at the moment. And then once you use a Vera to go ahead and find this product, which I found over here. You're going to copy the URL of the AliExpress product, and then you're going to go ahead and paste it into this section over here. So now, now so far, you've got the URL of the eBay seller. You've got the title of the eBay seller. You've got written down how many times it sold in the last 14 days, how many times it sold in a lifetime, and how much the eBay seller is selling it for, the AliExpress product linked and then how much is the aliexpress price so if i look at the aliexpress price over here i can see that this seller is selling it for four dollars and 49 cents however if you choose e-packet it will cost two dollars 32 or if you choose free shipping then it will cost four dollars 49 so let's just say for argument's sake that this seller was not using e-packet and he's only selling it for four dollars and 49 cents right now what actually happens next over here see where these sections are in blue where the sections are in blue, you don't really need to do anything. So what has this done over here? So what it's done over here is it shows that the eBay selling it is selling it for $10.25. The AliExpress price is $4.49. So it's automatically calculated the price difference of $5.76. So over here, it shows 228%. So what does that basically mean? Let's just put a starting point of 100%, okay? Now, if, say for example, the eBay price was $10.25, and then the AliExpress price was $10.25, it will show 100%. That will basically mean that this eBay seller is not selling it at any markup at all. It's selling it at a zero markup. So if you press 
if I press Control Z. And so what's that actually happened here? So this AliExpress price is $4.49. The eBay seller is selling it for $10.25. So actually, this eBay seller is putting 128% markup on there. Okay, so if they've got a 50% markup, this will show 150%. But this person has put a 128% markup on there. So that is why it is showing as 228. Now, ideally, we only want to be looking at products that have a 50% markup or more. So this figure here shouldn't be less than 150%. If the product is less than 150%, that means this seller is probably not selling it for enough of a markup for us to consider this item so we'll just go ahead and move on to the next item now what it shows over here is a recommended listing price so this ebay seller that we're going to be sniping is selling it for ten dollars 25 what the recommended listing price will do it will automatically take 25 cents away from the ebay seller's price so if the ebay seller was selling it for let's just say eleven dollars 25 then this should show as $11 and if I just change that over here as you can see that's changed to $11 obviously this markup over here has changed over here as well and so is this figure so let's just put it back to its original price which is $10.25 so what it's showing over here that we should ideally sell it for $10 or less just to get some substantial impact so customers can notice a price difference now if we move over a little bit over here what you put over here is once if you source the item from Yakify, you're going to put the price how much Yakify will cost you. And if you put CJ dropshipping, you're going to put what CJ estimated price will cost you. So how do you calculate the price on CJ dropshipping? We'll look at CJ dropshipping and then we'll look at Yakify as I've already sourced this item from CJ dropshipping. So why is this showing a $6.34? Now, one thing that you're going to notice is when you source an item from CJ dropshipping, you're going to sell it to various different countries and then the prices may vary depending on the shipping option that you choose. So, for example, if you was to send it out to United States, there might be one shipping cost. If you want to send it out to United Kingdom, there might be another shipping cost. If you were to send it out to Australia, there might be a different shipping cost. Now, from what, from my experience, what I've found, when it comes to CJ dropshipping, Norway is kind of in the middle figure. So when you are calculating how much an item is going to cost you in total, let's just use norway as the middle mark of what an item may cost us sometimes it might cost us slightly more sometimes it might cost us slightly less but norway is kind of in the middle and then what you want to do is go over to cj dropshipping look at the product that you've sourced and then you want to look at one of three options either cj packet either cj liquid or e packet you want to look at the cheapest of the three options because those are the only three shipping options that we are going to use. If we can't list it by with those three shipping methods, then we're not going to sell this item at all. So you want to make sure it's got either CJ Packet, CJ Liquid or ePacket. Now, if we have a look over here, let's go ahead and put Norway. And let's see what options. There's China EMS. We're not interested in any of these. We're interested in either CJ Liquid we're either interested in ePacket or CJ Packet. And in this instance, CJ Packet is not available. The reason why we're going to be using these is because of the shipping days. Now, even sometimes I've found that CJ Liquid is not very good. So personally, I only look at primarily CJ Packet or ePacket and I use CJ Liquid as a last resort. But really, effectively, you really want to be just looking at CJ Packet or e packet those are the main two remember those names cj packet or e packet now in this instance cj packet is not available so only e packet is available and is this because of the delivery times of 7 to 20 days that's something that we're going to use and it's showing that it's going to cost $3.92 so if the item costs $2.42 and the shipping costs $3.92 $2.42 plus $3.92 and that will total cost of $6.34 so if we go back to this sheet over here i've put it down as $6.34 now, what is this over here? Profit. So basically, it's showing that if we listed the item at $10, see that recommended listing price? So if we listed the item at $10 and the item cost us $6.34, we're still going to be making a 57% profit on that. Now, why is that important? The reason that is important is when you are listing from CJ Dropshipping or if you are listing from Yakify, you want to be putting a, a minimum of 40% markup on there. So in this instance, if we actually sell it for 
and the item cost us $6.34. We're still going to be making a 57% profit on there. However, you don't want this figure to go below 40%, 140% over here. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can put at least a 40% markup on there. Really, you want to be selling the item for at least $10. But if you really want to go cheaper than that and you want to become a lot more competitive, then you don't want this figure going below 140%. And as a matter of fact, as I'm making this video, I actually thought of a great idea of a profit calculator or a markup calculator over here. So say for example, this item is costing you $6.34 and if you listed it at $10, you're still going to be putting a 57% markup on there. However, say for example, you want to think, okay, I just want to go for a 40% markup. So if I sold this item for $9, right? then that will be a 41% markup and it will automatically calculate it for you. So you can use this as a calculator. And also this will also work for Yakify. So say for example, you wanted to calculate the CJ price. What this will do is it will say if this item on CJ costs $6.34 and you wanted to sell the CJ product for $9, then you will it will show that you will be putting a 41% markup on there. Okay. Now, this will also work for Yakify. So say, for example, you was able to purchase this product from Yakify for $6.34 and say, for example, OK, I can get this item for Yakify for $6, the item and the shipping is going to cost me $6.34, but I want to sell this for $9.50. Then it will show you that if you sell it for $9.50, you're going to be putting a 49% markup on there. And I've literally just added that on as I'm making this video. And I think it'll be very helpful for you guys, just in case you want to go for the minimum markup. This bulk section over here, it doesn't really calculate anything, but once you start doing bulk orders, so if you want to order a hundred of these items, then you can just put yourself a reminder over here how much a hundred items, hundred of these items will cost for Macify or a hundred will cost from CJ dropshipping. But in this instance, we've been able to source this item from CJ dropshipping and the total cost, remember, we looked at Portugal as the middle mark when it comes to CJ dropshipping. And for Yakify, I found that the middle calculator is Canada. As a matter of fact, I'll just put this as a reminder for you guys. So I'm going to put Norway for CJ dropshipping and I'm going to put Canada for Yakify. Let's actually delete that and paste that over here. And this will just be a reminder that once you source the item from CJ dropshipping to work out the average price, you're going to work out either CJ packet or E packet when it comes to CJ dropshipping. And you're going to use Norway as the base country to calculate your price. And in this instance, we used E packet and it was $6.34. For Yakify, it's going to be slightly different. For Yakify, they automatically use this one over here, which is called Special Line, or they use ePacket, whichever one delivers faster. In this instance, they're going to go ahead and use Special Line. So when it comes to Yakify, see I put Canada over here, so you calculate the price with Special Line, and which is the great thing about Yakify is that they deliver items very fast, so seven to 12 business days within their Special Line delivery service over here. So remember, let's just go over that one quick time again. When it comes to CJ drop shipping, you want to use Norway to calculate your prices and use either CJ packet or E packet. And when it comes to Yakify, you want to use their special line and use Canada to calculate the cost of the item, which is Canada is kind of the middle mark. Some countries may be more than Canada and some countries may cost less than Canada, but I found that Canada is kind of in the middle. And then this will automatically calculate. So if this item costs us $6.34, then it will calculate that we will make a 57% profit on this specific item over here. However, this figure may change slightly because sometimes it may cost you less to ship to other countries that are not Norway. Sometimes it may cost you slightly more, but we want to make sure that we can put at least a 40% markup on there. And if you really want to sell it for as cheap as possible, then you can calculate it over here. So in this instance, I've used CJ dropshipping. And if I was to then list the item for $9 when I'm purchasing it for $6.34, it will show that I'll be putting a 41% markup on there. Remember to download this, guys. This will really help you guys out. And this is how you are going to calculate the pricing strategy of your items. Let's go over to the next video.